In an effort to deny Trump the delegates necessary to secure the nomination, some parts of the GOP establishment are rallying to Cruz's side. Jeb Bush, for example, will hold a fundraiser for Cruz this week. And DeMarco, Team Cruz expects to pick up the endorsement of Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker tomorrow. Well, Major, these Cruz comments on policing came as somewhat of a surprise last week. Did Trump's past comments on Muslims like the call for a ban on entry to the U.S. force Cruz in this direction? Well, a couple of things did. I think Cruz has always been looking for a way to be nearly as strong as Donald Trump on the issue of counterterrorism, of immigration, and Islamic extremism, but not go so far as Donald Trump has to try to ban all Muslim immigration. And he took heat from Trump a couple of weeks ago in the campaign for not immediately endorsing the concept of waterboarding. As we all know, Trump said he wants to bring back waterboarding as an interrogation tactic and maybe do something even more intense than that details yet to come. So Cruz has been looking for a way to look nearly as strong as Trump. And of course, the events in Brussels, coupled with those in San Bernardino and in Paris, have intensified the debate within Republican circles about how to deal with this issue domestically. What is it that law enforcement should or should not be doing? And in this case, when Cruz was talking about selective, community-oriented policing, if you will, and monitoring on an active basis Muslim neighborhoods, he was remembering something that the New York Police Department kept under wraps for a very long time until 2011 when the Associated Press for the, was the first to disclose how the NYPD, with the cooperation and collaboration of the CIA, used these exact kind of surveillance tactics throughout New York and even in New Jersey, many of them in mosques, in an effort to detect and prevent terrorist attacks as they were being plotted. Bill Bratton, the current New York police commissioner, ended that program in 2014, and that's where we find things now. But the Cruz campaign likes to point out, it's not as if this idea, A, wasn't considered or implemented in the city that was the most vulnerable to terrorism after 9-11. It was, it was put in place, it's since been rescinded, but it's not like this idea is so outlandish, it was never thought of or executed. In fact, it was, and that is one of the central defense lines Cruz has about this concept. Major, I want to play some sound from Trump today. He's renewing his attacks on Ted Cruz over a super PAC ad featuring an image of Trump's wife. Let's listen to this. When I hit somebody, I'm a counterpuncher. I always hit back. I mean, I'm not starting anything, and I never started anything with Cruz, and he started it, and let me finish it. But I always, it's, I'm a counterpuncher. Remember this, he starts things, and so far, I've been finishing things, but that's the way it is. So I'm not hitting. I'm not. I don't know hitting. how he, well, he didn't. He didn't I start believe, the wife row. He didn't start the wife did. row. Of course he did. Of course he did. He sent a card of a model picture that my wife took many years ago, the cover of GQ that, that magazine. Wasn't, that wasn't Ted Cruz. Was fine. Oh, of that course wasn't. it was. Are you so naive? You are really naive. Oh, it keeps going and keeps going and going. We're about to mark one week of this back and forth. Is either person winning this war over the wives one weekend or are they both losing? Well, I think we're going to have a very good verdict on that. And I'm always a reporter who lets voters cast the final verdict on issues like this because it's easy as a semi-analyst or a reporter like myself to talk to a bunch of people and ask them what they think. But voters are ultimately going to be the deciding factor in Wisconsin a week from tomorrow. And in that primary, Donald Trump once had a lead. Ted Cruz is now running even with him in one poll, five points ahead in another. And I can tell you, the Cruz campaign believes they're going to win Wisconsin. They expect to get Governor Walker's endorsement. They have most of the endorsements so of people who are very involved in conservative talk radio in Wisconsin, maybe not the absolute endorsements, but many on conservative talk radio throughout the state of Wisconsin have become very sympathetic to the Cruz campaign. That's a powerful force in Wisconsin politics. So if there's a verdict rendered by voters decisively for Cruz in Wisconsin a week from tomorrow, then you can say to yourself and others, this did not work well for Donald Trump. The Cruz campaign, I can tell you right now, believes this is a net negative for Donald Trump, that it's not working for him, especially in a place like Wisconsin. And my guess is Trump will spend less and less time talking about this, describing himself as a counterpuncher, and the underlying facts, whatever they are about who started it or who didn't, are probably going to be lost on everyone within the both campaigns once the voters decide what they make of all this, in addition to every other campaign issue that's likely to come up between now and next Tuesday. And think about it this way, DeMarco. 
Yes, it was the topic of conversation for the week previous, but there are several town halls and debate-like formats this week in Wisconsin that are probably going to delve far more deeply into other more substantive issues. And my guess is by the time this campaign ends in Wisconsin, there'll be much more focus there than on the comparative attractiveness of the two candidates' wives. All right, Major, thank you. Always good to see you. See you.